the Anderson hitch, our AC modification, retractable shower door, RV digest holding tank treatment, dehumidifiers, flagpole buddy, and much more. This is all things that we have previously done videos on, whether it was a product review or a modification or DIY project. And we're gonna let you know today, how is everything holding up and if we still like it. So don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Wait. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining us. I'm Chris, and today we're gonna to talk about 20 modifications and products that we've reviewed in past videos and talk about, well, how are they today? How are they holding up? Do we still like them? Is everything still working? Some are, some not so much. So we're gonna jump into it and just knock them out. Let's do it. Okay guys, the first two on the list, the toolbox and tonneau cover. Now we've had these for almost three years now, and I'll tell you right now, both are holding up just great. And as we go through everything today, we'll go ahead and reference all the videos. If you want to go back and watch the installation process of anything or how we review the product in full and down in the video description, we'll have links to all those videos and you can go back and check on everything that we talk about and just touch base on real quick today. So as far as these two right here go, they're both holding up great. I specifically got this toolbox right here. This is the better built low profile toolbox with the shotgun latches. That way I can pop it open from standing outside here, reach in here and get my air pump, anything I need without having to climb in the bed of the truck. Plus when I'm hitching up, I can see over it and see what's going on behind me a lot easier than a taller toolbox. Now the tonneau cover, this is the access soft roll up cover and it actually works with this toolbox specifically. You can see how they join up right here. It's, if you can see it, it's kind of hard to find a toolbox that works with the tonneau cover. So this was kind of the perfect storm. I actually love both. They're both holding up great. The tonneau covers had no issues, keeping things dry in the bed of my truck. The only problem is I don't think they make this toolbox anymore. I'll have links down below if you want to try to find it, but I will have a link to e-trailer where I got the tonneau cover. Ready to come hold this camera for a second, buddy? That's okay. You got it. Okay, number three on the list, the flagpole buddy. And as you can see, since it's not here, I guess you know how well it's holding up. Not so well. That's because it broke, but I will say, we used it for four years, full-time RVing and some extreme winds. It held up for a long time. I was actually pretty impressed with it until just recently when one of the poles actually snapped. Let me jump back down and I'll tell you about it. So overall, I was pretty impressed with the flagpole buddy. Like I said, we used it for four years, full-time RVing. We left it up 24 seven in some pretty good wind conditions. One section finally broke. They were willing to send us a new section for free. You just have to pay for shipping. But we've since found out they actually have a nicer, stronger, more durable flying pole buddy where the uh, pole is basically two times the thickness. So we're actually gonna opt for that and upgrade to that. And uh, I'll let you guys know how that one goes when we get it. Okay, next up, number four on the list. You may have seen our video on the Anderson hitch. It was a really good hitch, but as you can see, we don't have it anymore. So we now have the Reese Goose Box, and we've also done a video on this in the past. But how did the Anderson Hitch hold up? Well, I had no problems with the Anderson Hitch. Again, full-time RV with it around the country for almost four years almost using that hitch. Never had any issues, never had any problems. We have a 17,000 pound camper. It held up great, it was smooth, it was quiet. But still, I wanted to go to the next level, and that's why we went to the Reese. Now we have absolutely nothing in the bed of our truck. So if the Anderson Hitch is something you're interested in, again, links to all these videos down below. We'll have a few of them pop up over here as they come up. Wait till the end of this video, go check those out. As well as if you're curious about the Reese, well, you can go check out that video as well. The retractable door by Stowit Industries. This is a new one. We've had this for approximately five months now, and we've already got a lot of questions on how is it holding up? Do you guys still like it? Yes, we absolutely love this one. We reduced our weight by about 60 pounds removing those glass doors. And this only weighs six pounds. You don't have to clean it. It doesn't get dirty. Can't say enough good things about the retractable shower door. Highly recommend that one. It's holding up just fine. That's two thumbs up on that one. One of our favorites. And by the way, one of the reasons we're doing this video here today is because we get so many comments on so many of the previous videos that we've done in the past. People wanting to know how are things holding up over time and how are these items and modifications 
doing? Do we still like them and things like that? So we just wanted to touch base on some of the more popular ones that people still ask us about. Let's go ahead and move on to number six here in the bedroom and technically the living room because that is going to be the AC modification that we did a few years back. If you haven't checked out this video, definitely recommend that. It is our most popular video and for good reason, it is going to keep your RV a lot cooler. It's going to quiet down the ACs and it is going to get the air flowing a lot faster to your air ducts where you want it to come out. Now, this was a great modification we did and I have not really heard one complaint from anybody who's commented down below on that video who has done this modification since then. So if you guys are looking for a way to stay cooler in these RVs during the hot summer months and you haven't looked into this uh, modification, go check that out. I will say it doesn't work on every single type of AC unit, but that video will let you know if it's gonna work for yours or not. While we're here in the kitchen, let's talk about the solo unit from a company called Blue Technology. This is a water filtration unit that I installed underneath the kitchen sink. In addition to our in-cabin filter and our inline filter, this just adds a layer of protection for our water as we do drink straight out of the tap. But again, we have three water filters and there is 0.2 micron filter, which is great because that's going to filter out all sorts of dangerous things. Unlike your standard water filter, which might be a five micron or even a 20 micron filter, which basically just filters out sand and sediment. This is going to make your water completely safe and drinkable without having to worry about any kind of parasites, iron, calcium, anything like that. So um, go look into that if you're looking for a uh, more cost effective way to get good filtered clean water in your RV without having to use maybe a big bulky system that has you know the three canisters that has to sit outside and things like that. Been very happy with it, can't say too much more about it. And by the way, if that is something you're interested in, we do have a link down below. You can get 7% uh, off from Blue Technology on any of their products as well as their water filters anytime you need some more just by using our promo code YWAIT001 and all this information will be in the video description below for you guys. Next up on the list, the Anderson Buckets. How have they been holding up? Well, I'll tell you right now, these came with the RV when we bought it slightly used from the previous owners. So we've been using these for over four years, full-time RVing again, 17,000 pounds sitting on these nonstop. And yes, they have cracked once. Usually caused from sitting on gravel like it is right now. With the gravel not exactly being an even surface and really hard, it is known to crack the rim down here once in a while. And I'll hold this one up right here. You can see it's hollow inside, but sometimes these this lip right here will get cracked from the gravel and so much pressure being on there. I will say Anderson being a great company, they will replace it as a lifetime warranty. If one cracks, it's usually shipped like the next day. So we had no issue with that. You just send them a picture. But something that we recently have found out is by working with RV Snap Pad, they create a thick rubber base to work with your Anderson blocks to go underneath them to prevent that from happening. It also gives you a more stable base, a wider footprint, and it's a rubber base, so there's just less chance of moving around and things like that. And if you're interested in any RV Snap Pad product, whether it's the basic RV Snap Pad foot or the RV base, which I'm talking about right here, again, check out our link and our promo code YWAIT and you can get 10% off any RV Snap Pad product. But as far as the Anderson jack blocks go, we've been happy with them. No issues, actually love them because it creates less movement in the camper because you don't have your leg extended as far now. The more leg you got extended, well, the more shake and uh, wobble you're gonna get inside the RV. Okay, the water softener from Camco. This is actually the second water softener we've had. Before this, we had one by the company On The Go Portable Water Softeners. Uh, to be honest with you, it had some plastic fittings and things like that that eventually broke. This one actually does have brass, which seems to be surprisingly a little bit more heavy duty than the on the go portable water softener. And this Camco water softener has held up great. I will say there was a leak and an issue with the cap. And that was kind of right from the get go. We contacted the company. They sent us a new cap. It might've just been a, a strange gasket inside there. Since then, it's been over a, well, well over a year now we've been using it. No issues with it. It's keeping the uh, water soft and uh, yeah been pretty happy with it. Sticking with Camco, how about the Camco awning shade? Well, as you can see, it's not on the awning no more. That one did not hold up so well. After only about one season of using it, and we don't even use our awning that much, I don't know from it just being rolled up inside of there, the little plastic pieces that you slide into the track, which actually holds it in place, 
Two of them have broken off just by themselves from being rolled up, I guess, and we had to toss that. It was not something we could fix, so we're actually a little disappointed with that one. It seemed a little bit cheap, and I think we'll try maybe the uh, carefree uh, sun awning shade next time we want to get one of those and see how well that one holds up. While we're talking about shades, let's go check out the slim shade that we installed on our front door. So this has been pretty cool. It's held up well, had no issues with it. It keeps the sunlight out, a little bit more privacy, a little bit more shade. It still opens and closes just fine. Once in a while, we do put just a little lube on this uh, string inside the track here, just to keep it moving freely. Uh, there's been no leaks around the edges or anything like that. Been really happy with that. Just nice having the privacy and a little bit more shade on the front door. The only thing that's not that great about it is It'd be cool if you could access it from inside the RV, but with your screen door, you just can't get to it. You have to actually open the door. You have to pop the screen out. You have to walk around the outside here, kind of, you know, move your screen door out of the way, like so, and then you have access to it. So that's the only downside to that. You'd have to get some kind of screen door modification so you can access it from inside the RV. Otherwise, been pretty happy with it as well. So let's talk dehumidifiers. If you guys watch my channel, you know I always say water is a camper's worst enemy. We run three dehumidifiers, one medium sized one and two smaller ones, or you can usually just get one larger dehumidifier to uh, handle the whole RV. And we've always got these right here by Everdry. We have this large one right here that we keep in the main part of the RV. And then we have the two smaller ones, which we've had for four years now. They've been holding up good. The larger one did eventually crap out on us and we replaced it with a second uh, newer version of the same size from Everdry. It's been holding up pretty good so far and we got about two years out of that first one, just a heads up on that. But dehumidifiers, very important inside an RV. So right here underneath our propane tanks is a little magnetic propane sensor. You might've seen our video on this. This is the Mopeka tank sensor. These are coming great handy, especially if you're going to be full-time RVing in the wintertime, like we've had to do a few times in some colder locations. This basically sends a sonar signal through the tank, right to your phone via Bluetooth, lets you know how much propane you have inside of your tank. Comes in handy. Um, we have had this for about 16 months now, if I'm not mistaken. One of them is still holding up strong, the other one, it just stopped working so we replaced it with this one from the company this is a newer version a newer model right here and they've been working okay they still give a great signal uh the readings are fine the readings are really accurate we've had to change the battery on them twice since then and i just think your battery life is going to last depending on how cold it is and how often you use them but overall been really happy with them a little bummed out that the one of them did eventually crap out no matter what i did i couldn't get it working again so we have the newer one right here hopefully this one lasts a little bit longer like i said the other one in the other tank is the original and it's been going strong so eh, 50 50 on whether you know these were worth it or not as far as the price and only having one of them last about a year long not so happy about that Let's talk about the tst tire pressure monitor system probably the first thing we purchased before we even hit the road so we'd have safety and peace of mind going down the road we have these sensors installed on the rv and on the F450 as well. We got the flow through sensors, so you don't have to take them off when airing back up. I will say this has been great. The sensors have not fallen off. There's been no issues. They work fine going down the road. They always read from the monitor in the truck to the back of the tires without losing signal. Can't say enough about the TST tire pressure monitor system. Been extremely happy with it. I see no downside to it. I think it's probably the best one on the market. And again, if that's something that you're interested in, we will have Amazon links to everything we talk about today in the video description down below. Let's go ahead and talk about the telescoping ladder you see right behind me. Now that is something we had from one of our original videos. Uh, I believe it was the 20 essential items for RVers. We talk about this ladder and review it. It held up pretty good for a long time. Over the past year or so, I can't get it to fully retract anymore. And you can see what I'm talking about here. It comes down, but it, when it gets to like the last uh, rung or two, no matter what I do, I can't get it to retract. I've tried everything and I do take care of this ladder. I actually keep it lubed up with some uh, Boshield T9 to keep everything moving and working good. And I don't know if it just got too wet or if it got clunked around, but for some reason I can't get it to retract all the way. 
Could be worse, could be better, but if you're gonna buy one of these, I definitely recommend reading all the reviews, trying to find the one that maybe just has the best rating overall. Only two to go, and number 19 on the list is the Halo View dash cam and rear observation cam. So we have one camera installed on the rear of the RV. We also have the dash cam on the truck, and it also comes with a nice 10 inch LCD screen to view everything. Super impressed with it. Actually, while towing down the road, I thought it was gonna lose signal between the uh, camera on the back of the RV and the monitor in the truck. But throughout the whole trip, we only lost signal once for like five seconds. So it actually did a really good job with that. The screen is nice and crisp and clear, and it now allows me to have Apple iPhone basically in my truck, because I do have an older truck that doesn't have Bluetooth. It doesn't have a touch screen. So now I can actually use this screen with my phone compatible through it. And now I have navigation systems along with the dash cam and the rear observation cam. And we also have a link to the product if you are interested in purchasing it, which will get you a discount. The last one on the list is going to be RV Digested Holding Tank Treatment from a company called Unique. They reached out to us a while ago to start trying their product. We have always used Happy Campers in the years before and we had never really had a problem with Happy Campers tank treatment. They always kept the smell down, never had clogs, never had any kind of buildup or anything like that. But we said we'd go ahead and try it. That was probably about seven months ago, right at the end of summertime. So I will say we have not used this through the heat of summer yet. So we will see how this holds up with the smell once things start to get real hot, which is coming up real soon. But as far as it goes otherwise, been super impressed with it. No clogging. I, you know, like to watch my black tanks as they flow through the little clear elbows. Uh, everything has looked smooth as far as not big chunks of waste. Everything seems to be broken down really well, as gross as that sounds. But hey, you guys got to check these things out. Otherwise, how do you really know if your product's working if it's breaking things down? So that's what we've been using for the past few months. So far, so good. We've been happy with it. I would recommend it. They have a few different products. They have a tank sensor cleaning product. They have a deep tank uh, cleaner product and actually a few more. Plus on their website, they have lots of uh, tips on how to use their products and that basically just how to maintain your black and gray tanks overall. So we've been happy with them, but the jury's still out. We're gonna see how well it holds up during the heat of summer here in Georgia and see if we can still keep the smell of the black tank at bay. Well, there you have it. For some of you who watch our channel and you've seen a lot of these videos in the past and you've reached out to us and always ask us questions, how are things holding up? Do you still like them? Are the modifications still working? I hope this helped a lot of you out. For those of you who are new to the channel, hey, go back and check out some of these uh, previous videos that we basically talked about today on the modifications and products. And as always, get out there, start your full-time RV adventure because you know it, why wait? We'll see you guys next week.